From mysterious beasts on the moors to real sightings of Bigfoot, here are eight unreal creatures explained. Number 8. Mermaids Mermaids have been both romanticized and villainized in fiction. We have our lovable little mermaid Ariel who just wants to be connected with the human world, but then again, we also have the evil but beautiful sirens who would sooner lead humans to their death while making them fall in love with their music. There are many records of explorers who have claimed to see mermaids throughout history, including Christopher Columbus who stated that he had seen a mermaid on his travels. Alternatively to the beautiful visions that we have of them with long flowing hair and seashell bras, Columbus said that they weren't as beautiful as they were said to be and that they looked quite masculine. Columbus's statement was obviously before the world of YouTube and CGI, so his encounter could have been the effect of drinking too much seawater. There's many explanations for why people think they've seen mermaids, but the most popular is that people haven't seen mermaids at all, but they've actually seen manatees and that people in ancient times were just really confused. Their faces look nothing like human faces, but they move their heads in a human-like manner. From afar and among a bunch of sea spray, perhaps you could think you were seeing a mermaid. Although to be fair, it still doesn't explain their siren songs and why humans would fall in love with them so easily. Number 7. The Beast of Dartmoor In the southwest of England, a cluster of moors called Dartmoor is home to a lot of creepy stories and sightings. A lot of people claim that certain areas of Dartmoor are haunted, which can easily be shrugged off. However, many people have not only seen this next creature, but they've taken pictures of it. Maybe even you have! The Beast of Dartmoor has been described in many different ways and from the pixelated photos, it looks like a mixture between a wolf, a bear, and a big cat. While no human harm has ever been recorded due to this beast, there have been numerous farm animals, mainly sheep, that have been found with their throats torn out and large paw prints leading away from the scene of the crime. There have even been fictional adaptations of this creature. BBC's Sherlock went to Dartmoor to investigate the mysterious hound. Remember the Hound of the Baskervilles? I'll leave you to find out what he discovered on your own, but the most likely theory is that the Beast of Dartmoor is actually an escaped big cat from Dartmoor Zoo. In recent years, there have been numerous escapees that have survived by prowling through the moors. Might be better than facing their caged lives, right? The beast is said to be a puma and many reports match the size and description. Mary Chipperfield, the famous circus owner from the 70s, was forced to close down her zoo in 1978. She was supposed to send five pumas to a new wildlife park, but when the box was opened, there were five tags but only two pumas inside. Mary said her car had broken down and they had escaped, but people believe she did it on purpose so they could live free in the wild. Just in 2016, a lynx escaped its enclosure and is now probably also wandering around the moors. So in any case, if you feel like something is stalking you in Dartmoor, watch out because it might just be a wildcat ready to pounce. Still not a comforting thought. And now for number 6, but first if you are a returning subscriber, welcome back! And if you're new here, join us by clicking that subscribe button. Number 6. Zombies Many people actually believe that zombies are real. 14% of Americans believe there is a small chance of a zombie apocalypse coming. All the zombie shows and movies aren't helping, so maybe these unreal creatures don't need that much of an explanation. But I'll tell you anyway. The general idea of zombies is that they are the bodies of the dead that have come back somehow so that they are literally the walking dead. They are normally depicted as very slow moving because of some parasite and all they want to do is bite you and eat your brains. Something like that. While some people worry about the zombie apocalypse, others are actively preparing for it. Also in the states, there are courses that you can take to prepare you on how to survive a zombie apocalypse. But where did the idea come from? In the early 20th century, Haitian witch doctors were said to have the power to bring people back to life using voodoo. However, they were normally brought back feeling mindless and easy to control, which is why they were used in sugarcane fields. Sounds crazy? Well, one of the zombies that the witch doctors brought back to life had actually spoken out about it. Clairvius Narcisse was pronounced dead in 1962, but was found again 18 years later claiming that he was brought back to life by one of the witch doctors and was forced to work as a slave. It was later discovered that the doctors were using medicines that simulated death. To create the mindless nature of the Risen, the doctors would then administer a drug to keep the people under the influence, in a way making them zombies for years. 
I mean, brain parasites do exist, and in the past, people used to get buried alive by mistake, so there are all kinds of ways a zombie apocalypse could happen, especially with voodoo priests and other evil geniuses wandering around. Number 5. The Loch Ness Monster Supposedly, the Loch Ness Monster inhabits Loch Ness in the Scottish Highlands. Last year, 2017, was a great year for Nessie sightings. Many people have snapped pictures of what they believe to be the fabled sea serpent, but they've always been on pixelated phones or the image moved too quickly to be able to clarify for certain whether or not it was the creature. For those of you that don't know, the Loch Ness Monster is described as a kind of sea serpent, with a long neck and possibly several humps. There's never been any malice associated with it, just fascination as to whether it exists or not. While this might not explain any recent sightings, there is a definite and somewhat sad explanation about the early sightings of this creature. One word, elephants. Hear me out, hear me out. Ever seen an elephant's trunk pop out of the water? From afar, wouldn't that look like a snake's head or a serpent's head? Elephants aren't exactly indigenous to Scotland, but around the time that the sightings first began, there were many traveling circuses roaming the highlands of northern Scotland. In the middle of performances, the travelers would let the elephants play in the lakes. Elephants are very strong swimmers and would easily be able to duck beneath the water. Many of the reports could be explained by a long trunk sticking out of the icy lake. Unless you were on the shore near the elephants, you would never think this in a million years. Like I said, this doesn't really explain recent sightings, but people go to that lock expecting to see Nessie. And now, since everyone has such good cameras, anything that you see that is remotely similar is definitely going to get recorded. Number 4. Dracula While I could delve into the vast world of vampires throughout history, I'll just focus on the most famous vampire that there is, Count Dracula. While Bram Stoker's novel is entirely fictional, he was inspired by someone who is probably the closest historical evidence that we have of a real vampire. Vlad the Impaler, or Vlad Dracul III, was Stoker's muse when creating the terrifying character of Dracula. He had some very strange habits which led people to question whether he was even human. There's only one way that he got his name, through impaling people. He would invite guests to dinner, normally enemies or people that he had a feeling would overpower him in some way, and would have them impaled and put on display. But what was worse, he used to then dip his bread into their blood and eat it. While it wasn't directly drinking someone's blood from their neck like the classic vampire, it's still pretty gross. After his death, he was buried just outside of Bucharest. However, this hasn't been fully confirmed as there were reports that stated that his body was never buried there, and some said that it disappeared. While we all know that Dracula per se wasn't real, there is an explanation for why people think that vampires existed. Rabies. Rabies has the tendency to spark a need within some of the affected to bite other people and to share the disease. It also creates a bloody foam at their mouth which could look like you've just been drinking someone's blood. Vampires are also closely linked with bats, who are notorious for carrying rabies, and garlic is supposed to act as a deterrent for them, which is likely because when someone has rabies, they are hypersensitive to any type of stimulation, especially intense odors. Put it all together and it explains why many sick people were thought to be vampires. There is no clear excuse for Vlad Dracul, however. I think he was just a psychopath. Number 3. Unicorns Now you have unicorn everything. You can't step into a clothing store anywhere without seeing something with a unicorn on it. Unicorn makeup, glitter, tears. Starbucks even created a unicorn-inspired frappuccino. But where did the idea of unicorns come from? Do people still think they can see them? Even though they are recognized as magical creatures, there is a theory about where someone could have possibly gotten the idea from a white horse with a horn attached to its head. Ever play the game Telephone, also known as Chinese Whispers? Even in the same language, when whispered among a group of people, something is going to get lost in translation. That is what is likely to have happened to the unicorn myth. A Greek physician called Tezias met with a group of Indian travelers. In his works, he wrote about an Indian ass, which was a four-legged beast that had a horn protruding from its head. While we now know that the travelers were talking about a rhinoceros, you could see where Tezias was confused. An ass is another word for a donkey, and I don't know what rhinos you guys have seen recently, but they definitely don't look like donkeys. They also don't look like unicorns. The elusive white unicorn later took on a religious significance and was also known to have healing powers. In Asian medicine, you can still find ground-up unicorn horn to help cure you of any illness. 
Who knows what you're actually buying, though? North Korea reported that it found a real unicorn lair. Too bad no one can go visit it in person. Number two, Bigfoot. This list would be incomplete without Bigfoot. This Sasquatch creature has been an unexplained phenomenon for many years. Many people have claimed to have seen him themselves. There's multiple pictures and videos, but none of them are definitive evidence. Like any film taken on an old camera phone, they're not entirely clear and could be anything, similar to the Beast of Dartmoor. What might look like a bear from afar could turn out to be a large cat. There's also the opportunity for hoaxes and fakery, what could look like a very convincing video where someone who just stumbled upon the famous creature could have actually taken hours to set up with a good costume and believable acting. But a recent theory is that Bigfoot is real, and that he's actually not a humanoid like some people believe, but an extinct giant ape. A woman in California claims that she saw Sasquatch hanging out in a tree last year and is now suing the state for not believing her and for failing to protect Bigfoot. The Gigantopithecus used to live thousands of years ago and matches the description of Bigfoot almost exactly. They were 10 feet tall and would have weighed a massive 1,200 pounds. Nobody knows for sure why they went extinct, and now many are thinking that perhaps they didn't, and that they actually just went into hiding. This would account for the numerous sightings of Bigfoot in different locations. Perhaps there's an entire species of ape living among us that we thought were long gone. Number 1. Mummies the idea of mummies has been scaring children and some adults for years. Especially if you've seen Scooby-Doo, you know that the zombie-like Egyptians can be quite terrifying. Of course, mummification was very real, which is perhaps what makes them so creepy. So where did people get the idea that these mummies were going to reanimate themselves and begin chasing you with both arms outstretched? Well, there was a lot of superstition between archaeologists that if you disturbed the wrong tomb, bad things would happen to you that could even lead to death. This might seem just superstitious, but they weren't entirely wrong. During the excavation of King Tut's tomb, several members of the excavation team died under suspicious and abnormal circumstances. The curse to them felt very real. You would be right to think that perhaps the superstition wasn't unfounded, but think about what would be in a tomb. Mountains of bacteria, toxins, and fungi, which would be dangerous to breathe in and could even kill you instantly. Did you know that even a rotten potato has the power to make a human drop dead? Think about what a rotting, mummified king could do. Archaeology is no joke, people. Thanks for watching! Do you have any other explanations for these unreal creatures? Let us know in the comments! Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time! Bye!